here is the culmination of the entire projectile motion unit. All right, we're going to do a sample two-dimensional problem by shooting something up into the air at an angle. Woo doggy. All right, so it's up and down, left and right at the same time. So here's our example. A boy throws an apple upwards at a velocity of 15 meters per second, 35 degrees above the x-axis. How far does it travel? Okay, and this is presuming it lands at the same height. We could mess it up even further by having it land at a different height. We're saying it's going to land back uh, down at the same height. So first thing, picture, right? We've got our apple. Here's our 15 meters per second. And uh, one of the first things we're going to do is also create a um, component diagram of this vector. And so we're going to get an x vector and a y vector of a velocity here to start off. Well, we've got our stuff up here, and we've got a listed our variables here. We only have these. We have these uh, five for the y, and we only have the three for the x. And remember, the t's are going to match each other. All right, and so we are looking for how far it travels. So we want to know what time it was in the air, how much time. And so then we can go get that here. So once we know that time, we can solve for this. All right, we know acceleration is negative nine point eight meters per second squared, and we know we're going to land. Uh, at the same height we launched. At least that's what I'm saying it's going to be. So we need to find now what Vx and initial Vy are. And we get that from our initial vector here. We made a triangle of the initial velocities. If I shoot something up at 15 meters per second at 35 degrees, it will be moving sideways some amount and it will be moving up some amount. Okay, so we're going to break that into pieces using our sines and cosines. All right, so if we look at the x side, that's going to be a cosine side. So cosine of 35 times this 15 is going to give us the side here. V of x is 12.28. Okay, so we're going to put that in there, 12.28. Let's find Vy of i. Okay, so in this case, it's the sine of 35. Boop, boop, all right, multiplied by uh, 15 meters per second is going to give us 8.6. So the Vy is 8.6. And we're almost done here. We've got three variables that we know, we want the fourth. We're going to take that over to here and use it here and multiply it and get our distance. So we're going to bring down, this is the equation we're going to bring, okay? Because uh, the initial velocity here is known, 8.6. Uh, and we don't care, basically we don't care about the final velocity y. And this is the one that doesn't care about the final velocity in y. Okay? We bring in our numbers, okay? Uh, delta y is zero lands on the ground again. Initial velocity is 8.6. Boom. All right. We don't know the time. One half negative 9.8, being all picky here instead of negative 10, and the time squared. We're trying to solve for the time. Now, if you look at this, all right, time can be divided out. Time could be zero. So I divide it across. That means um, a legal position for the, the apple is to be on the ground at time equals zero. Duh, because that's when I threw it. So I divide out the time and solving this for t, and I get this little equation here, right, divided by t there, and I get my net time in the air according to the y calculations, all right, the up and down calculations. I see that it's in the air for 1.75 seconds. All right, so we're going to take the 1.75 seconds, plug it into our x uh, projectile motion uh, formula. It's the only formula we use in the x direction. We plug that in, and we get, boom, 21.5 meters. That is how far the apple flies until it hits the ground again. All right. That is 20.5 meters. Now, let's do something, the same thing, but at 55 degrees. Now, you may notice I'm doing something here, right? And 55 degrees, if it's 35 here, that's how I try, this is 55, right? Okay, we're now going to check what happens if instead of the 35 launch, we launch it at 55, but the same speed, all right, same velocity. Well, everything's the same, except for now the sine, the cosine is switched. The two sides have switched now, okay? Now the y is 12 and the x is 8, where before, right, the x was 12 and the y was 8, okay? So now the y is 12, x is 8. We're going to go in and start filling it in, okay? We want to know the time. So we go through and we find the time, okay? Substitute in for this. Again, we're dividing by t out, uh, uh, and so that we get just one value of t. We find it's in the air for 2.5 seconds. Right, if we compare that to before, 
it was in the air for 1.75 seconds, right, when we did it at this angle. That makes sense, right, because uh, if I shoot it up at a steeper angle, it's going to be in the air longer. All right, well, let's carry this through, okay? We know that the sideways velocity here is much less than it was last time, okay? But I'm in the air longer. And if I multiply those out, I get 21.5 meters. Oh, my goodness. All right, see what happened there? They all both went the same distance. Okay, these are called complementary angles, meaning they, they both, you know, add up to 90. And it turns out to be a period of truth. Okay, projectiles launched at complementary angles will land in the same spot. Okay, it, you know, presuming it's a, a level surface, right? It's going to go up, one's going to do that, another one's going to go, whoo, they'll land at different times, but they'll hit the same spot. Okay, so if I, for instance, instead of 35, 55, if I land, launch something at 15 and at 75, they would also land on the same spot. Not the same one as these guys, but they would land at the same spot. So 15 meters per second at this, 15 meters per second at that, will land at the same spot. Okay, now, uh, so what is the maximum distance you can shoot? All right, so for a given, you know, like 15 meters per second, I want it to go as far as I can. Which way do I go? Well, there's one theory. Launch it up really high so it stays in the air a long time. Pow! All right, and you can get far. Or you can launch it really low. The advantage of shooting it low is that you can go really fast sideways. The x velocity is super fast. Okay, But you can see, imagine the limits of this. If I shoot it up really high, I'm not going forward very much. If I shoot it very low, it's going fast sideways, but it's not in the air very long. And so it turns out that 45 degrees, all right, exactly halfway between the two axes, is the optimum launch angle. If you want to send something up in the air and have it fly as far as possible for any given velocity, right, if you launch it at 45 degrees, it will go the farthest distance. Okay, and that's again they're assuming those in no air and stuff like that. So, so fundamentally, something to keep in mind that's useful is that complementary angles end up at the same spot. One goes high, one goes low. So this, so this guy here is traveling fast, but doesn't stay in the air very long, fast sideways. This one stays in the air a long time, but it's not proving, proving side, uh, not moving sideways very long. Okay, so they both end up in the same spot. Okay, and 45 degrees is the angle you want to make something go really, really far. Well, at least as far as you can get it. There we go.